Hey folks, it's Max here and welcome to a new TW 2020 video. You join us near the conclusion of 2026. So we've got this event, we'll then obviously get Winter is Coming, and yeah, we're into 2027, which is absolutely crazy how far we've gotten in this save. So, really looking forward to what's to come ahead. So, Crowning Glory, uh, traditionally now known as the place where we crown champions of tournaments. So, we'll have the Tag Team Brody Lee Memorial Tag Team Cup will be here, which is going to face uh, it's going to be LFI taking on Top Flight. So, that should be good. Top Flight with a stellar victory over the Young Bucks in an 89 rated match in one of my last shows. And the Trios tournament, which will also see the Trios Championships on the line. We're going to see the team of Randy Orton, Richard Holiday, and Wardlow from Cody Rhodes' the stable. And they're going to battle the team from Rampage, which is Brian Danielson, Daniel Garcia, and Gable. So that should be a blockbuster match. So last year, you can see here, we had FTR defeat Kevin Steen and Sami Zayn to win not only the AW World Tag Titles, because they were vacant because of Matt Jackson's injury, but also to win the Brody Lee Memorial Tag Team Cup. And you can see there it was Will Ospreay and Aussie Open, who defeated E. Kofi and Woods to win the Trio Stone. Of course, they lost uh, E. Kofi and Woods to Danielson, Garcia and Gable. So as the show goes along, we'll discuss a few things of how certain aspects came together, plant a few seeds for winter is coming. So sit back, relax and enjoy the 2026 edition of AW Crown and Glory. So, sold out in MetLife Stadium, did again, just to get the, the sell out of the 82,000, get the, the gate receipts in. We actually started off with a matchup that wasn't going to work out. I knew this was going to happen beforehand, but I wanted the IWGP US Championship to move to Buddy Matthews. So, with the match here, good heat, subpar wrestling. They had a match before, which I knew they didn't click, but I wanted the championship switch. Uh, Matthews defeats Starks in 11.54, while well, using ropes for leverage, so new IWGP US champion. Interestingly enough, New Japan have never changed the champion. Any title change has been done by me, so I'm like, oh, cool, I'll officially use it as a an unofficial belt of AEW, but Matthews is now going to run as champion. It gives him a good little chance to get a run in Japan as well. But well, just a 59 because of the clash of styles. Although I do think even if he did have styles, he'd maybe struggle to make a 70. But we can start basically putting a rocket ship to Buddy Matthews. Next up, we had the AEW Women's Championship on the line. Now, Elena Black won a number one contender match to get a rematch with Demi Bennett. And in a similar kind of twist to Luchasaurus, uh, Christian Cage and Wardlow kind of thing. Attack with a ladder and we set up with a ladder match. So went with that. I feel that was a good opportunity. It maybe gives a bit of a chance for Elena Black to overcome the odds. And it was about the hard superb wrestling and great heat as Demi Bennett defeated Elena Black again in eighteen twenty seven when Demi retrieved the championship. She makes her third defence of the belt. So not as over as this at normal singles match, but we had um a lack of psychology penalty here, which we didn't have the last time. So probably because we gave it a bit more time. Uh, Elena Black also taking a stunt bump, but 82, pretty solid considering a psychology penalty. And after a matchup, Elena's getting stretched out, and just Demi Bennett just keeps taunting her. She just says, This is what happens, you try and step up to me. I fought so hard to get to this championship, I'm just going to destroy anyone that steps in my way. So, we've obviously had some great matches recently in the women's division Elena Black, Demi Bennett, Rina Yamashita versus Mayu Abatani. And that's not including the nine other million talented women we've got on the roster. So hopefully good things for that division in 2027. Another little promo here. This is Isaiah Casti cutting a promo on Mark Quinn. So obviously, in the last couple of months, and especially in the tournament as well, poor stuff from Private Party, another defeat. Isaiah just got too frustrated and just took out his frustration on Mark Quinn, beating him down, effectively turning heel. He says Mark Quinn is basically a loser. And he's going to pin him. And even though the likes of Bandido and a champion Ricochet are in this Zero X Championship match, it's going to be Isaiah Cassidy that pins Mark Quinn to become the new champion. And that's a 59. And the matchup itself was good. And indeed, Isaiah Cassidy did defeat Ricochet, Mark Quinn, and Bandido in 1253 when Isaiah Cassidy pinned Mark Quinn again using the ropes for leverage. Very strong heel heavy show so far, and Isaiah Cassidy wins the AW Zero X Championship. So basically, with this one, 
the people that kind of want to use in this division now are the likes of Mark Quay and Jirazai Cassidy. He's given them a chance to single athletes and get shown from New Japan. And I always ricochet, despite obviously that's been perfect for his style, to, to basically go further up the card. And the same with Bandido, but I know they can put in a great match here and it not affect them too much. So, new, new champion, first singles goal in AEW for Isaiah Cassidy. Next bit of match here, superb wrestling matchup, they had great heat. And they saw a shot at Umino defeat Water in 22-10 with a roll-up, 78. Storyline behind this one is basically promise in game, you know, I'll happily put shot at Umino over twice. So we've done the matchup on Dynamite, shot against the win, and after the matchup, Water says, that's fine, you've beat me once, you face me again, it won't happen again, he's got the roll-up again. Babyface to be babyface, that's obviously a bit of respect to Water going, fair enough, you've done well. And it does mean, as I say, a, a 78 rating overall, because you'll get the, the penalty for babyface, babyface. I think Shota might be popcat, but Walter's one of those athletes that's just so good that any popularity loss he takes, he can e easily gain it back. Then I've got a hype package for our next matchup, which is Tyler Black versus Drew Galloway. Backstory of this one is, obviously, Tyler Black's been having a great run of victories on the Carnage brand. The only defeat he had was against Brody King. I needed people to step up, so... I decided to bring back Drew Galloway, Ronda Rousey, I've hired uh, Australian Suicide as well for that brand. And yeah, we're just going to go straight in with Drew versus Tyler. They've had some back and forth, Drew's had some good matches on Carnage as well. And that leads to this tonight. Just a bit more star power basically needed to carry to let the younger talents develop. So I've been really high on pushing the likes of uh, Ty Melo, Steph Delander, uh, to name two. It has actually mostly been women I've been pushing on it on that brand. But as I say, there's such a depth in that division over three brands. By the way, the matchup itself, Drew defeats Tyler Black in 12-21 with a Claymore. A 68 plays a 90. That just shows how much form Tyler Black's been in. He could easily still go on the top two brands. And I really feel that he'll probably get a move back pretty quickly. Regular matchup as well, in the negatives, which is true for being rusty. Very surprising no indie bookings, but there you go, that'll come back over time. And a little segment backstage in 95 here. So basically, my premise for this one was obviously Adam Cole and Jay White are obviously in the Super Elite. So they're obviously into Cody, you know, it's, it's cool you get your own faction and now that, or your own faction, I don't think you'd be speaking the Scottish slang, but you get your own faction, you know, but remember, you know, you've always got a home here in the Super Elite, you know, like, do you really need those guys, you know, like, Randy Orton's known to stab people in the back, you know, you know you'll be fine with us. Q coming to the ring, Hangman, and Hangman just says, talking about stabbing people in the back, we'll just look at Adam Cole and Jay White, what they've done to Hangman Adam Page, and then obviously they try and twist it on them. We basically end up in a situation where obviously they're still in... An intense rivalry between Cole White alongside Hangman, but they've also said, Cody, you know, if, if you come at this match tonight as champion, you're a match with Eddie Kingston, which will explain the details of how that came together later on. Um, then these guys will be sitting waiting in the wings for a potential title shot. So the champ is still. They're also very unhappy because they've done them heel, but as it is, Cole underperformed and the segment deserved better than this. But 95, pretty solid. I hope that made sense. Next up, we had MGF and Jack Perry. Simple one of just MGF just getting under the skin of Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy saying he wants to knock MGF down a, a peg or two. Superb matchup, MGF defeats Jack Perry in 1757 with one top ball. Nothing more to add to that. Basically, it's MGF on the card and carries on his great momentum. I'd love to put more faith in Jack Perry, but the pop cap is a pain. Hey, though, pretty solid stuff. I've got a backstage segment and it's between Walter, Axel Barfell and Adrian Sevilla. Now we had a little segment on Dynamite after a tag match where Walter says, you know, he's been losing a lot recently, you know what I mean? You really need to consider, you know, is it worth being, you know, abstaining the values that you've got at the moment or is it worth, you know, seeing the light and, and coming and joining me? Barfell and Sevilla say, well, that's twice in a row you've lost a shot at him, you know. Maybe it should be you that should be maybe looking to change your path. Think about it. We respect you, but I don't think we're quite eye to eye right at the moment. So 63 for a potential Imperium, for an unbending Imperium appearance down the line. Next up, we had a decent match up here that had the Shine Championship on the line, and it was Chris Statlander who defeated Jamie Hater in 11:33 with the area 451. 
Chris makes defence number 6 of the Shine title. This gained a 71. Uh, obviously hinting at a face turn for Jamie Heater here, but it was a, a very good win for Chris. A strong female demographic. We're very happy with her winning here. Chris has been feuding with the likes of Jamie Hayter. She's been feuding with the likes of B Priestley. She was in a tag match with Yuka Sakazaki. But she had uh, she got like an injury with broken ribs. So I done an angle where she, Yuka lost the match. They beat her down. And then that will lead to basically this match up here. Jamie getting one more opportunity. But Chris picks up the victory. However... B Priestley's not happy. What have you done, Jamie? You've lost again. That championship should have been coming to you. And B Priestley just knocks the utter crap out of Jamie here. 55. To be fair, I just want to give Jamie a face run. I've not given her a baby face turn at all here. And I want to book it, so I feel like let's start her off against B Priestley. It's a very quick one. And she turns baby face. Oh, really? That's a shame. Didn't get in particularly well. Probably have had a few short ones recently, so I think... We need to really push Jamie and get her belt back up quickly. Because we can't have those haters going to hate. Next up, we had the Trios Tournament on the line. And it was a good matchup. Decent wrestling, good heat. And it was the team of Wardlow, Randy Ottoman, and Richard Holiday who defeated Danielson, Garcia and Gable in 11.39. When Wardlow pinned Gable with Splash Mountain Powerbomb. Oh, the Trios titles were on the line as well. I'm forgetting that, God. It's not that many to that many tournaments and that many trophies. So we do have trios champions, we have trios winners as well of the tournament. God damn these I've always having vacated belts before tournaments, doesn't make it easy, but aye, there you go. at the moment Cody Rhodes' faction holds four championship belts, Wardlow up and holiday, and of course Cody's the champion. So the reason well I'll quickly sum this up, seventy seven, weak performance fifty three. Look at Danielson. With a 73, Garcia with a 63, is it just a case of this format didn't work for them? Did I make it? Wild Brawl? Well, maybe that was a factor as well, because obviously they're technicians, but I just wanted a proper angry matchup here. So just to clarify, uh, before we get to it, why it's Eddie Kingston and Cody Rhodes, the semi-final was Wardlow, Orton and Richard Holiday versus Eddie Kingston, Santana and Ortiz, obviously they're still friends in this game. And Eddie Kingston just went, I don't care, Cody Rose has just cost me, I'm sick of them, I'm sick of the freedom, the four of them, sorry, just let me get my hands in Cody, let me beat the crap out of them. And Jericho went, you know what, go for it. I mean, you can face him, you had a great feud with MJF, you can have a great feud with Cody, so that's your main event. So it probably will be a poor main event because neither have psychology, so I'm fully expecting this to maybe have like a 76 rated main event and maybe an 80 pay per view overall. But... That's the main event we need to have tonight. And the three of them celebrate the championship belt, so I've just covered that. 69. Trios champions, trios tournament winners. Randy, Wardlow and Holiday. That's a bit gut enough. I thought I'd be a wee bit better than that. But anyway, it was about to have superb wrestling and good heat. Top flight defeat LFI in 15.02 when Dante Martin pinned Roosh with the 450 splash. Top flight when the AW Brody Lee Memorial Tag Team Cup. 82, Darius was off his game. You can see there, Darius was 77, 86. If I can say one thing about this tournament, it is really good. Andrade and Rush over to the extent like they could easily go in main event right now. Both are like mid 80s to near high 80s of overness. They've had a great run. They're still champions, of course, but top flight will earn that rematch. I'm wondering if the fact it's capped at an 82. Because this was a Steely Show matchup as well. We had to protect Rush to take the fall. So I'm feeling that's probably hampered that a little bit. Because obviously he was the playing ball putting two capped pop capped wrestlers over. But I felt like I need to keep building the future. Top flight need to have, to, you know, have done something in five years. So Brody Lee Memorial Tag Cup winners. And uh, yeah, can pretty much book in for a winter is coming. A rematch of Top Flight and LFI for the tag team belts. As Top Flight will try and go 2-0. Against LFI. And after the matchup, Rush and Andrade are raging. They're furious, they've lost this. And they put the Martin Brothers top flight through the tables and did that kind of that taunt celebration they do at the end. And at 87 for that, so pretty strong stuff. 
and that led us to the main event, which I felt like it was going to go this way because of the psychology situation. And it was about that fantastic heat and good wrestling. And we saw Cody Rhodes defeat Eddie Kingston in 11.33 after using a formal object. So the heels continue to reign supreme. Cody Rhodes makes the first defence of the belt. A 79 gives a 75 for Eddie and 81 for Cody. And Eddie's looking very still, so I need to look to fix that. I've also made this a wild brawl as well. It's one of those ones, it wouldn't normally go for my main event if I wanted to get a 100 rated show. But I fully can I accept that the tail has to go as the main event. So it's one of those shows you take the hit as the main kind of main result. Because obviously I do like 90% of my ratings my main event. I could easily put it as something else, but storyline purposes dictate that. So it is what it is. And as I say, we'll go into Winter is Coming. With all four of these men holding championship belts. So they celebrate in the ring. Cut a wee promo just saying they're here to just reign over AEW. Get ready for Cody Rhodes's Triple H and MGF quote of Reign of Terror. But 81 overall. And uh, yeah, just Wardlow struggled when off script. So overall in 88, obviously thanks to the boosts, etc. Otherwise it would probably have spot. But I think you can see here, I'm trying to get a lot more into the storyline kind of things. It's like, obviously, I want to get horror rated matches, horror rated shows for the achievements, but I do feel there has to be an element of we have to start focusing on storylines because I feel I'm in a position now where a lot of the guys I wanted to push are, are at that physical decline. They're at that kind of stage where you need to be putting the younger talent over. And it's finding what talent's ready and what talent's going to be restricted because of pop caps, which is always a pain, but that is what it is. So that's us for the episode. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you saw, we thumbs up would be deeply appreciated. Next week, we'll be back with some Winter is Coming. And then after that, we'll have a series of two weeks. We will have just a roundup of the basically the Power 500, the various awards. And the week after, we'll look at a few other companies to get an idea of how the AI badly handles a lot of things. It's just one of, it's just one of those things where they take the data and go from that. Like It's not just in TW. When I've done my pro wrestling sim simulation um, Reggie was WWE champion which let's be honest isn't going to happen in real life but as I think the gate I think Spud might even be champion here but we'll, we'll figure out once we get to it it's quite cool to see how WWE have handled us signing practically everybody that I like and um, how they're basically left with basically Roman Reigns and a 65 year old Undertaker running amok but as always, cheers for watching. Remember to check out the Fantasy Speakers subreddit and the Grey Dog Software forums for other written and verbal content. Until then, take it easy, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.